What's the word, y'all? Trade deadline is less than a month away, and because of that, we got a lot of different reports, a lot of different rumors, and an article by Bleach Report that says, one trade deadline prediction for every NBA team. We're going to be reacting and giving our opinion about this, but a couple housekeeping things. This might be the last video on this channel for like a week or so. I'm going to San Francisco to do a shoot with the Warriors, kind of a W, um, and then right after that shoot, I have to go to Atlanta to do a shoot with somebody else that's classified. So I just, I'm, I won't be here for a little bit. I'm going to take my camera and stuff just in case there might be a big trade because trade deadline is around the corner. Um, but I doubt it. But just if you don't see a video around here for a while, that is why I am working. And it's not a vacation. It's two work trips. Um, I, there's nothing I'd rather do than, than make videos for y'all. You feel me? But work calls. So I got to go. Also, if you happen to be at Warriors versus Rockets on Friday, hit a brother up. Let's meet. Let's get a picture or whatever you need. You feel me? I want to meet y'all. All right. One trade deadline prediction for every NBA team. This is by Zach Buckley of Bleach Report. He's got 150 comments already. So I'm expecting um, that some things in here that people might not agree with. The Atlanta Hawks make consolidation trade. Um, the Hawks are a team that I can see taking a couple different terms. Trading Cam Reddish is only the start. The Hawks will continue reshuffling the roster around Trey Young and Capella uh, as they're only untouchables. Perhaps by turning some combination of John Collins, Gallinari, and DeAndre Hunter into a full-fledged co-star for Young. I, I think that we kind of saw... Well, nobody saw that them being this bad coming, right? I feel like most people predicted they were going to have another season similar to last in the sense that they're going to be a, a, a bona fide playoff team, top four, top five in the conference. What we've seen since Clint Capella's coming back from an Achilles, he hasn't looked the same, and he is the anchor of the absolute defense. And they're getting to the point now, it's like, hey, if Clint Capella's not going to be the absolute anchor of our defense, we probably need, like, real defenders around him. So let's go trade for some of them, or let's go get a secondary star. I just don't know what team is selling. That's the big thing about this trade deadline. Who's selling, who's not? Um, Boston Celtics duck the tax with Dennis Schroeder deal. I think this is... Almost a guarantee of a deal. The Dennis Schroeder is going off to another team, not because he's bad or not because he doesn't fit, whatever. It's because of the luxury tax and they're trying to get under them. And the um, Portland Trailblazers are two teams that I feel like are going to make trades to get rid of money. And I think this is the way. Brooklyn Nets wait for the buyout market. Makes a ton of sense, man. Once we get those older people that are trying to get that ring, they're going to find the team that looks like they're most competent to win a championship. And the Brooklyn Nets, according to Vegas right now, are the NBA champion favorites still. I don't agree with that whatsoever, but I, I'm not saying that they can't. You know what I'm saying? With these three dudes on your roster, anything is possible. I definitely wouldn't have them as a favorite, but they will get somebody on the buyout market. You're going to be like, man, they got that player too. Like they, when they got Blake Griffin. And here we are. How much is that? Anyway, uh, that's usually what the bio market is. How many times in bio history has somebody got to a team and be like, oh, that was the missing piece to win a championship? I'm sure it has happened. But more likely than not, it's not the missing piece. You feel me? Uh, the Charlotte Hornets upgrade at center for sure. But it was just a report today that because of Miles Turner and his injury, that the Charlotte Hornets are like, I don't, we don't really want to deal with that. Um, so who is the upgrade at center? There's another rumor that Matres Harrell might be on the move. Is Matres Harrell the upgrade at center for the Charlotte Hornets? Potentially. I don't know. Is that much of an upgrade? Because I'm looking for them a defensive center. And I know that Matres Harrell brings a lot with his high energy and offensive rebounds and stuff like that. They need a defensive center because anytime they're going against a good center, I'm betting the over on that center to get points and rebounds. It's just the way it goes. The Chicago Bulls into the Jeremy Grant sweepstakes. I don't think it's going to happen. There's another report today, whether it be a rumor or whatever, that Jeremy Grant is not looking to take a lesser role, whatever team he gets traded to. And obviously, he gets traded to Chicago. He's definitely behind Zach Levine and DeMar DeRozan. After that, you can argue between him and Vooch. He'd probably be over Vooch, but he'd still be number three, and he still wants to be number one and number two. That wouldn't happen here in Chicago. And he's looking for a crazy extension. If, that, if all those reports are true, Chicago, please stay away. Next. Um, Cleveland Cavaliers, keep Kyle Sexton and Nick Kevin Love. I hope this is true for them. Um, I've definitely seen a lot of reports about, hey, we're going to throw Kyle Sexton in the trade because he's a restricted free agent and we don't want to give him money. But there's a world where because Kyle Sexton is coming off of a significant season-ending injury, that the price of Kyle Sexton has significantly dropped because nobody knows what he's going to be like. So let's keep him on the team. At least to further notice. Kevin Love, he looks rejuvenated in Cleveland. Uh, somebody sent me a clip the other day of us talking about Cle um Kevin Love from last season and just talked about how bad he was looking and how he didn't love Blant being there. It looks like he loves being there again. So great. The Dallas Mavericks use trade exceptions to bulk up backcourt. I don't really know what this really means. Dennis Schroeder fits the budget and can create offense for himself with teammates. Okay, Tomas Sadoransky, DJ Augustine is a name here. Okay. Um, the Denver Nuggets stand pat. Cap, this was reported or this was created before the Bobo trade. <laughs> they traded for Brent Forbes. Um 
So they not stand pat. They got another shooter. After Jokic went to the podium and said, hey, everybody in the league know we can't shoot. They got a guy who can. Next, flip Jeremy Grant for multiple first round picks. That makes sense, but if you're trying to pair these two things, the Bulls don't have multiple first-round picks unless you consider Patrick Williams a first-round pick because he's just in year number two and he only played one season. I don't know. And it was the first season. They got shortened. Flipping for multiple first-round picks, that would be an absolute uh, W for Detroit if they are able to get two first-round picks for Jeremy. Scan the clearance section for size. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, big setback for, or maybe not big, but a setback for James Wiseman. And, yeah, they, they need a big, big. Uh, Kevon Looney holds it down. I like Kevon Looney game a lot. But they could use some, like, actual 7-foot-ish size instead of the 6'9 uh, and 6'6 six, six front court. You feel me? Stop, uh, shop Christian Wood and trade Eric Gordon. I like this because even though it makes sense for every NBA fan to be like, Ah, oh, Christian Wood on one of the worst teams in the league. He's valuable. Let's trade him right now. He's only, like, 25, 26. Um, so, he, it's not that he's not too old for the timeline but you definitely listen to calls you know what i'm saying but you don't absolutely have to accept a trade for him just because if it ain't the right deal you know i feel like they might have done that a little bit with the james harden deal they just accepted because they had to rather than like getting the best possible offer and eric gordon 100 has to go has to go trade established vets for other established vets this is the worst thing imaginable for the Pacers I've talked about this multiple times they're they're not just their front office but their owner is really complacent with like hey if we trade Miles Turner we're not trying to bottom out or get a young piece to build around or get a young piece that we can develop we're gonna get another player that is about the same value as him and hopefully that might the shuffling of the decks might get us into the play-in I hate that for the organization sell the team um Clippers make a future focus move sure <laughs> i guess i mean they don't have their own first round pick this year so there's no real incentive to tank and i don't think this is what they're telling them to do they're not saying tank but maybe get something that can help next year so that is the future when uh paul george and Kawhi are back lakers keep russell westbrook and trade thc i think you don't really have a choice but to keep russell westbrook and trading thc is the only chance you have to upgrade Woj said today that he would expect the lakers not to be super active because they don't have anything worth trading for except for maybe tht and i feel like his value is up and down across the league some people might see him as a dude to to potentially get as a young asset and some people might see him as an absolute dud it's 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 a lot aim for the stars for the grizzlies i've seen this quite a bit uh, where people are saying hey the Grizzlies are great. They've been a sleeper team, and they've won 22 of their last 26 or whatever it is. But what if they did it, and they traded for a dude that might we don't even know is available? Whether it is a Bradley Beal, again, I don't know if he's available, or it is Brandon Ingram. What if they did buy in? They got they got all of their draft picks, if I'm not mistaken. They still got some younger players if you wanted to throw them in. They got salary filler. I'm not saying to do it, but I like the idea of out of nowhere, oh, you know, from, from the top ropes, the Memphis Grizzlies just traded for another solidified piece. It would be great. Come on, man. This team with a Beal, with a B.I. And again, I don't think those guys are traded. They're not, I don't think they're getting traded, but I'm just saying, aim for the stars, 100%. Call every team that has a young star that you can see potentially building with these dudes. Why not? Why not make it a big three? Um, I mean, I guess the argument for that is, hey, our depth is the reason we win in these games. I understand. Uh, Miami, sit, the tra sit out the trade season. I think they've done a lot of things around the edges. Finding Omar your seven. Finding Caleb Martin. Matt Struess. We're like, it feels like they've already won the trade market by doing the things in the offseason to increase their depth. You know, Duncan Robinson don't even start no more because Max Struess has been playing so well. Caleb Martin has been playing so well. And, well, and not because Duncan hasn't. Um, they might be a buyout team, a low-key buyout team because they're playing so well. Milwaukee Bucks, search for stopper, but probably stand Pat. Okay. I saw Pat and was thinking immediately Pat Connaughton. I thought they were going to say, hey, go get another center because of Brook Lopez being out with his injury. Minnesota, stay in Ben Simmons sweepstakes. But don't win it. This is their prediction. Uh, if the reports are true, they threw everything at Ben Simmons already, trying to get Ben Simmons on the team. So uh, everything other than uh, these two dudes, Anthony Edwards and Carlton Towns. And if you threw everything other than those two dudes, you're probably not getting Ben Simmons. Uh, add plug-and-play piece to chase a play-in spot. Who could that potentially be? Ah, uh, they don't give you a name. Uh, uh, 
next. I, I don't know what to think about the Pelicans. They said that they're chasing the play in. I just don't know how realistic that is, all things considered. They are playing a lot better now than they were at the beginning of the season. Uh, but they started off so sick. They, they put themselves in so much of a hole that they're just trying to climb out. And they're like 500 or slightly above 500 talent wise. And that's just not going to be enough. It hasn't been enough to be in that top 10 to be in the play in. And they, they be talking about Zion coming back one day. But I, I don't know. Pursue another shot creator. Sure. I want the Knicks to do something splashy. I want them to go crazy this deadline. I don't know what that is. I feel like the Knicks can be, they in for something big. That's all I'm saying. They thought this was big this offseason. You ain't seen nothing yet. No no sources. Trade Kenwich Williams. Buy out Derek Favors. I want Kenwich Williams in Chicago more than almost any player in the league. I know he is a role player and he doesn't necessarily move the needle crazily, but he feels like a player that the Chicago Bulls could desperately need um, his services. And Derek Favors being bought out makes a lot of sense for OKC, for sure. You're not, you're probably not going to find a trade partner for Derek Favors with the $9.7 million or whatever he's guaranteed. Next, collect multiple picks, including a first rounder for the Orlando Magic. Now they do have Mo Bamba. They have Gary Harris. They have uh, Terrence Ross. These are all trade pieces that they're trying to move. And though I don't think that Terrence Ross or Gary Harris at $20 million is going to get you a first round pick, Mo Bamba could. A team is like, hey, Mo has been really solid this season. He's like top five or ten in, in blocks per game. We're a team that's willing to give up a first-round pick because we still see him as a first-round pick talent and, and investment. Now, you will have to pay him this offseason, I'm pretty sure. But I can I can see them getting the first-round pick for Mo for sure. For sure. I already saw some Dallas Mavericks fans like, hey, we'll throw him a first-round pick. We need a guy like Mo Bamba to build around. Or not build around, but be a part of a build. Uh, ben Simmons goes nowhere. I agree. Sad, sad emoji face for sure. No comment. I told myself we're not talking about Ben unless there's needles to be moved and no needle has been moved. Trade Jalen Smith for front court depth. Now, I know Jalen Smith has been playing really good recently um, when they had the DeAndre Aiden and JaVale McGee out. Um, but you're like, why would they trade him now? Well, they didn't pick up that third year option for him. So I'm pretty sure he's an unrestricted free agent this offseason. And I just don't see them trying to increase whatever money he is offered so trade him delino gallinari and that first round pick that you have and potentially get a little bit better that's all uh trade multiple eight figure players another team that's trying to compete to stay under the luxury tax for a team that's like not a rebuild but with dame being out or whatever i can see two people in this picture mm, two people in this picture getting traded dame is safe dame is not getting traded but can we see cj and roco or roco and Yusuf Nurkic can trade him maybe. I am like 95% sure Robert Covington will be on a new team come trade deadline. That's it. Kings, backcourt stays. Harrison, Par Harrison Barnes goes. Harrison Barnes is another guy um, that I would love to see in Chicago. There's a lot of players. If we, need, we need like a four. We need another four in Chicago. And hey, we could be buyers. Um, backcourt stay makes sense. But all, all reports that I've seen is that they're, they're trying to be super active, man. I would love for them to sw split up the backcourt, whether they keep De'Aaron or keep Tyrese. I'm not the guy to make the decision, but I would love for one of them to get an opportunity somewhere else while the other dude can basically get the keys to the car, is all. 27, trade Thaddeus Young. Yes. <laughs> 28, flip Chris Boucher for wing depth. Which is weird to say because you have OG, Sfi Mikhail Luke. I'm, I'm counting Sfi Mikhail Luke for sure. Um, you have Scotty Barnes, Pascal Siakam. I guess those are maybe more front court than wing players. Um, but flipping Chris Boucher, I just don't know what his value is. He's had he's had a lot of um, highs and a lot of lows this season. Um, he had like an 18 rebound game the other day, and I think he had like seven or eight offensive of those 18 rebounds. So his high could be up there, but his low can also be pretty low. Make aggressive bid for Jeremy Grant. Jeremy Grant would be a near perfect fit for the Utah Jazz. For a team where Rudy Gobert is actively calling out his teammates for bad defense. Jeremy Grant could come in, and I, I'm not saying I'm not a dude that believes that Jeremy Grant is like the greatest defender of all time. I feel like he might be slightly overrated on the defensive side of the ball, from based on what he did two years ago with the um, the Denver Nuggets. He don't really play like that anymore, but he will be an upgrade than anybody on the Utah Jazz. It's not named Rudy Gobert defensively, so I love this. I just don't know what assets you have that the. I mean, do you have two first round picks to throw? I, I feel like that might be the asking price. Two first round picks. But two picks from the Jazz, they just feel like they're going to be a high-tier playoff team for the next decade. This is, where, this is the way it feels. And then the last one, uh, spark, a, spark a ton of trade smoke, but no fire. 
um they have so many pieces they'd be crazy not to pick up the phone to hear some of the trade offers that get thrown their way but yeah probably nothing significant happening happening with the Washington Wizards but you never know it's a trade deadline anything can happen so you let me know what you want to see your team do at this deadline and follow me on socials man I'm gonna be tweeting and hopefully I'm vlogging these trips and um hopefully we have a lot of fun man hopefully I have a lot a lot of fun on Instagram and all of that so y'all can be there for our journey while we go out to work uh I'll see y'all soon man